Welcome to my long-awaited Korea travel vlog. From touristy shopping districts and K-pop cafes to more local areas and even meeting Super Junior e Chuk's mom, I'll explain later, I went to a pretty wide range of places in Seoul. I actually just came back from my Taiwan trip the night before my flight to Korea, so that morning I was thoroughly exhausted. The moment I landed in Korea, I went to the first Korean restaurant I saw and had some nice warm food. I took the bus to my hotel. I just want to say that out of all the places I visited this summer, this is probably one of my favorite hotels in terms of interior design. Dropping off all our luggage, we strolled around the area and went to this cute local bakery to buy some bread for breakfast tomorrow. It is like pretty late at night now. We left the hotel and bought some cup noodles for emergency purposes. We spent all our money on buying a phone and now I'm wandering the streets with 20 cents Canadian dollars. No food in my stomach trying to find an ATM machine. <laughs> A good 45 minutes later, we finally found this ATM machine. Woo! We were actually quite lucky because there's an employee at this restaurant who could speak Chinese, so we successfully ordered food. So that was my first day, and now on to day two. That morning, I was struggling to find the right subway train to take when a nice old man came over and helped us out. So if any of you guys ever go to Korea and want to buy or sell things, you can contact him. The moment I exited the subway station, I was bombarded with so many cosmetic stores. Keep in mind that I went to Korea back in August, so endorsement models, especially those under SM, have changed since then. Internally sobbing, don't worry me too. But first, of course, I stopped by a cute cafe for some food. I kid you not, the oh-so-famous Myeongdong area will make your wallet bleed. Although there are a lot of locals who shop here, you can tell it's more tailored towards tourists because 90% of the salespeople speak Mandarin. If you don't speak Mandarin or Korean, don't worry, I can't either. But hand gestures and broken English works just as well. Any Super Junior and EXO fans here? If you are a K-pop fan, make sure you watch until the end. I'm serious. 32 centimeter ice cream? Psh, challenge accepted. Bring it on. As an avid fan of a lot of SM groups, I just had to visit the everything store. Fashion wise, it wasn't anything special. Um, there is a buffet on the top floor, which is kind of funny and strange. Honestly, I think the main reason why people come here is just to fangirl over the huge posters in the store, which is exactly what I did. So I walked to K-Story, which is a K-pop cafe run by Hecho's sister. There was literally one person in there and I'm not surprised why. For a cafe where the target customers are K-pop fans, I can't believe they don't even allow pictures even at the entrance. That was a huge disappointment, but food makes everything better, so we stopped by this highly recommended restaurant. I started off the meal with a shot of ginseng liquor. I had their specialty black chicken ginseng soup while my sister got the white one. After a long day of shopping, it's finally time to leave Myeongdong. I ended the 
night by visiting the Han River, the scheduled Rainbow Fountain show was cancelled, so we ended up simply walking along the river. This morning, I will be heading to the Hongdae area where I will be cafe hopping. Let's go! My morning started off very interestingly when there was a guy who literally fell asleep while standing in the subway, then walked out with his eyes still closed and dropped his hat. And before I could give it back to him, the doors closed, so I ended up giving it to the security office. Here's an OOTD featuring a dress that I bought in Taiwan and this super duper uber cute hair ribbon. Alright, starting off the day with some food at this Vietnamese restaurant. We ordered a few dishes and we, well, more like me, I devoured it right away. Mohahaha. <laughs> On to the highlight of my morning, which is visiting this cute ca cafe. I got a green tea frappuccino and it didn't taste good, but let's be honest, I'm just here for these super cute kitties. The store owner gave my sister a cloth. This cat came over. So I asked her for a dress cloth thing, and no cat is coming over. Oh. That cat really doesn't like me. Oh. <laughs> Why doesn't the lady help me? I want a friggin' cat in my lap. No cat. It's going to the little girl. Oh, oh, Cherry, there's one behind you. <laughs> All right. Look at my cute cat. No, it's a tad. Yo, it's a just, just pick it up and put it on your... No, I don't want to just kill sure. you. So my sister ended up giving me the cat. Finally. We walked around the area and oh my gosh. I don't know if it's just me, but every single time I see a Korean department store, I can't help but think of those Korean drama makeover scenes. So you guys need to visit this line fit store in this specific subway station. The workers here are so nice and so cute. I headed to the Ihua Women's University. I've heard so many good things about the different flavors of pizzas in Korea, so I've been wanting to try the sweet potato pizza for the longest time, and it definitely lives up to its expectations. Besides the university, there are plenty of cosmetic and fashion stores here. I wasn't able to spend much time here because it started pouring all of a sudden. I went back to the hotel for a bit before heading out again for a dinner nearby. I mean, how could I possibly not eat Korean barbecue while I'm in Korea? When I was planning this trip, I decided to be a little more adventurous and purposely chose a hotel that wasn't in a touristy area. The cool thing about this area is that it is super lively at night. There's lots of street food and a lot of bars and drinking places here. sightseeing, doing all the touristy things, like going to the palace. If you liked Yu Who Came From The Star, then you need to visit this restaurant, which was featured in episode 7. This restaurant's handmade noodles has been their tradition for 50 years. If you want to relax and take a nice stroll along the stream, definitely come here. My sister and I had a competition to see who could get a coin into that hole, and with my awful aim, I missed, but my sister got hers in. Being the sore loser I am, I tried again and failed again. 
as we were leaving, I just had to stop and film this. It's so cute. <laughs> Kwangjung Market is the nation's first market. I think I went at a bad time because there was nothing there, so I left shortly after. I left to go to Dongdaemun, which is another popular shopping district, especially for clothes. After walking around, I stopped by this cafe to try out their epic dessert. Before leaving this place, I visited the Dongdaemun Design Plaza. I loved the minimalistic theme at this museum. Everything here is so chic. I'm in a really cool chair right now. Wow, you can't even see anything. Day 4 was actually one of my favorite days because of this Hewa area. I saw this. Oh my god. Someone please explain to me why there's rainbow feces on the floor. The Ihua Mural Village is not a stranger to you if you're a K-drama fan. This place has a calming ambience, the paintings are absolutely beautiful, and coming here right before sunset was such a good idea. This is definitely a must, must, must visit place. As the sun went down, I walked around the Hewa Station area. There's a university and an arts theater here, so there's lots of younger people and a lot of talent. really cool because there is street food, there is cute boutiques, cozy restaurants, and like I mentioned, the people here are my age since they're university students. So yeah, and also, I swear everyone here look like models. I seriously loved coming here so this is another must visit area for me. Not to mention, just in one night, I actually encountered two different filming slash broadcasting sessions. I couldn't tell what show it was, but maybe you guys will know. I am at the uh, Happy Happy Moom Moom Cafe. In other words, a Rila Kuma Cafe. If you know me well, you would know that I am a huge Rila Kuma fan. This place is super cool. Let's go check it out. What better way to end the night than to go to a super cute Rilakkuma cafe? You guys know about my obsession, so this is practically Sherry's heaven. The next day, which is day 5, is my last day, and I have something very special in store for you guys. Good morning, today I'm heading to the SM building, so let's go! The glorious SM Entertainment building. Oh my gosh, if you guys don't know by now, my all-time favorite groups are Super Junior and EXO. I just had to fangirl. I mean, come on, you can hear trainees singing from outside. <laughs> I also went to Donghae's taco restaurant. Not going to lie, Super Junior will always have a special place in my little fangirl heart because they were the ones who sucked me into that K-pop black hole. Continuing on with my K-pop excursion, I went to a cafe opened by a few Super Junior members' moms. I seriously can't just pick one bias from Super Junior, so my top four in no particular order would be Shiwon, Kyuhyun, Ryouk, and Ito. And so yeah, the cafe has a bunch of celebrity signatures and it's just a really nice and cozy cafe. And there's also a stack of books where fans can leave their messages for Super Junior members. Yes, you. 
Okay, for the most exciting part of my day, I was speechless when I saw Ichok's mom. <laughs> I never thought there would be a day where I would fangirl over someone's mom, seriously. Right now I am in a specific subway station that was recommended by a friend. This place is massive. Out of all the other fashion shopping districts I went to, I would recommend this one the most actually. No, it's my last night in Korea. I'm ending my trip with a visit to the 10 story high Home Plus. Let's just all take a moment and look at how cute this is. Oh my god! It's an hamburger! And then look at this. Happy banana? Happy banana? Happy banana? Happy banana? Okay. Oh, look at these two notebooks I'm getting. It's a cute, scary, kind of looking panda. There's a sleeping panda. But pandas don't sleep, that's why they have dark shingles. I'm just kidding. While I was in Hong Kong, I thought I saw Kim Soo Hyun everywhere. In NTR, selling mooncakes, selling ice cream, selling backpacks, selling clothes, selling cosmetics, selling skincare products. And then when I came to Korea, I saw him very, very, very often. And now I go to the grocery store at like 11 at night and I still see him. In Canada, Pocky to me is considered as a luxurious item because it is ridiculously expensive. But no, it's so cheap. Oh my god, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get a couple of packs. Yeah, okay, that's good. Everyone here is screaming. Look how nicely packaged the meat here is. I love how beef, cans of spam, and even oil can come in fancy gift sets. I seriously think I bought enough snacks to last me a lifetime. That wraps up my lovely Korea vlog. I hope you guys liked it and found it helpful. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!